NumPy is a toolkit that helps us in working with numeric data. It contains a set of tools for creating data structure called NumPy array, which can be thought of as a number grid with rows and columns. It can be one, two, or even n dimensions in size. In this tutorial, you will learn how to find the standard deviation of the NumPy array, which is a statistic which measures the amount of variation in a data set. NumPy has a number of statistical functions that can be used to analyze statistical data. We will also learn how to find the standard deviation of NumPy array using numpy.std function. So what are you waiting for? Let's dive deep and understand all that we can about NumPy standard deviation. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Hello learners, welcome to the tutorial of the NumPy standard deviation. My name is Gaurav and once again I welcome you to all to great learning. Moving to the agenda, first we will be knowing what is Python. We will learn about Python and its uses. After understanding Python, we will see different packages in Python. So Python is having a massive collection of libraries such as Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib and many more. Next, we will see what is NumPy. So NumPy is nothing but a Python library that is used for scientific and numerical analysis. After understanding NumPy, we'll jump to the functionalities in NumPy. So we are having several functionalities which is provided by NumPy such as using NumPy you can create an array, you can do the indexing and slicing and many more. Next we are having NumPy statistical functions. So NumPy provides several statistical functions such as amin, amax. Also using NumPy, you can calculate variance as well as standard deviation. We're gonna see all the statistical functions in the Python programming. So now let's understand what is Python. So Python is a general purpose language having a simple syntax. So what do you mean by here general purpose language? That means you can create a variety of number of programs in Python. And also it is friendly to the user. Next. It is used in GUI, machine learning, software and web development. So as I already told you that Python contains a massive number of libraries. So we are having here PyQt5, Python TK Into. So using these libraries, you can create a GUI application. Also, Python provides several frameworks such as Flask, Bottle for which you can use it for the web development. It supports functional, procedural and object oriented programming. So Python supports functional programming. So we know that functional programming is constructed by applying and composing functions. Now moving to the procedural programming. So in procedural programming, we are using a code by stepwise procedure to develop an application. And now talking about object oriented programming, basically here we are dealing with classes and object. Next, Python is interpreted and in high level language. So we know that Python is an interpreted language, right? So when I'm telling Python is an interpreted language, so that means here a source code is converted into byte code and then it's executed by the Python virtual machine. So there are multiple examples in which Python is used in several companies such as Google, Facebook, Netflix, and many more. So this is the basic idea about Python. Next, we are having packages in Python. So as I already told you that Python contains a huge number of libraries and these libraries are used for the data analysis, data visualization, as well as machine learning. Right. So there are some of the popular libraries that we are having here. NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, C1 and Scikit-learn. Now coming to the NumPy, as I already told you that it is used for the numerical and scientific analysis. So now the question came when you are using NumPy. So the answer is simple when you want to create n dimensional array or multidimensional array. Also, it provides the mathematical operation to an array. Now coming to the Pandas, Pandas is mainly used for the data analysis. Next, we are having Matplotlib and Seaborn. So these are the libraries that are used for the data visualization. Talking about Scikit-learn, so it is a very useful library for machine learning. So now let's understand what is NumPy. So NumPy is a Python library used for scientific and numeric analysis. As I already told you that if you want to perform any mathematical operation, then you can use this NumPy library. Also, it allows us to work with arrays. So let's suppose that if you want to work with the multidimensional arrays, then you can use this NumPy library. 
Now, next point, it provides several functions to work with n dimensional array. So if you want to create an array using NumPy, so it provides several functions such as lin space, you can use a range and also you can use array function, right? So what is the module that has to be imported in order to apply NumPy? So we are having the module here import NumPy as NP, right? So NP is nothing but the alias, right? So when we are doing programming, I will show you that how you can create an array using NumPy. Next, we are having the functionalities in NumPy. So NumPy features that will be incredibly useful for a wide range of operations are creating an array. So as I already told you that if you want to create an array, then you can create it through NumPy. So how to create an array? You will just write simply here, import NumPy as NP. And then let me create a variable A. I will just write here NP.array. And inside this, I will just create this array. So this is a 2D array, right? So in this way, you can create an array. Next, we are having indexing and slicing in an array. So now talking about indexing, let's suppose if you want to find out any particular element at any specific position, then you can use indexing. The same goes for slicing. So let's suppose that if you want to find out only this two elements, so you can use the slicing and you can find the value at this particular position using slicing. Next, we can also find the shape of an array. Also, if you want to multiply an array, then you can do the multiplication using NumPy. So let's suppose using NumPy, I've created here one array, A1. You can also create another array, A2. And then we are having the matrix multiplication function. So I will just write here matmul. So this is a function. Using this function, you can multiply two arrays. Next, we are having mean. So we are also having the mean function in NumPy. So using mean function, you have to just write here mean. We can calculate the mean. So what is mean? So let's suppose if we are having 10 numbers. So the addition of 10 numbers divided by the total number of numbers that we are having. So let's take an example. If we are having here four numbers. So it will be one plus two plus three plus four divided by four. So in this way, we can create mean. Next, we are having exponentiation. So if you want to calculate the exponentiation, then you can use using the exponentiation function also. Next, we are having flattening an array. So let's suppose that if you are having n dimensional array and if you want to put into a single entity, then we are having the flattening function also that we can use using NumPy. Next, we are having a range. So as I already told you that a range is nothing but to create an array using NumPy. So we can also use trigonometric functions using NumPy such as sine and cos. So you can see that these all are the NumPy features and these are incredibly useful, right? For the various range of operations. So I can use here sine and cos functions. Here I can just write here arrange functions. And here as I already told you that we are having a flatten functions. For exponentiation, we are having exponentiation and let's suppose this is the variable. So I will just write inside this. Similarly for mean also, we are having mean function. Okay. And I have already told you about the multiplication of an array. We are having matmul, right? Matrix multiplication we can use. So in this way, we can use various functions of NumPy. So let's discuss about the NumPy statistical functions. So we already know that statistics is all about gathering and interpreting data. Right. So here we are having NumPy statistical functions that can be used to analyze statistical data. So NumPy provides several statistical functions such as Amin, Amax. You can also calculate variance as well as standard deviations. Right. So here if you see NumPy is the core package for scientific calculations. Hence NumPy statistical functions go hand in hand with it. So now let's see some NumPy statistical functions. So the first function that we are having here Amin. So using NumPy, we can calculate or we can determine the minimum value that is present in an array. So let's suppose in an array, you are having five values, one, two, three, four, five. So what is the minimum value? We know that the minimum value is one. So we will just use this function np.amin and it will give you the minimum value that is one. Similarly, we are having a max function, which is used to determine the maximum value present in an array. Then we are having average. And we are also having the mean. So average and mean function will give you the same output, right? Then we are having variance function. So it is used to determine the variance. So you have to write here VAR parenthesis to use variance function. 
Next, we are having median. So you can also use median function to determine the middle value or central value. And then we are having STD. So STD is nothing but standard deviation. So you can see that using NumPy functions, we can easily calculate mean, median, standard deviation, variation, minimum value and maximum value, right? So this is the basic idea about NumPy statistical functions. Now let's see into the practical example. So now let's see the practical implementation of different NumPy statistical function. So I will be using your Jupyter notebook. So I'll just click on this new Python 3 and I will just change the name here from untitled 28 to let me write here NumPy underscore statistical underscore functions. So first I will just import NumPy library. So I'll just write import NumPy as NP. And after this, what I will do here, let me create an array. So I'll just write here A is equal to NP dot array. And let me just make it as 2D array. So this is my array, right? Okay, now let me just execute it. So I can execute it by writing A or you can also write print A. So you can see that this is my array, right? So you can see that this is the way to create an array using NumPy. Now what I will do here, I have to find the minimum value. So how to find the minimum value? I will just simply write here NP dot A minimum. Let me change here the variable uh, X so that you are not confused because we are having the statistical function as A minimum. So let me just write here X. So inside A minimum, I will just write here X. So if you see that we are having here a lot of elements, right? And out of that one is the minimum value. So if I'm running it, you can see that I'm already getting the minimum value as one. Now, if I want to find the minimum value across the column. So let's suppose this is my column, right? First column, second column and third column. And across the column, if I want to find the minimum value, then how to find. So I'll just write here NP dot A minimum. I will write here X and then I will simply write here axis. So when I'm writing here axis is equal to zero, so you will see that on running it, it will give me the value across the column. So 136, one is the minimum value here, 473, three is the minimum value, 251 here, one is the minimum value. Similarly, if you want to find the minimum value across the row, so what I will do here, I will just write instead of zero, I'll just write here one. So my axis will be one here and you can see now we are finding the minimum value across the row. So across the row, the minimum value is here one. Then we are having three here. And then for the last also, we are having one. Now let's find the maximum value. So I'll just write here NP dot A max. And I will just write here simple X as a parameter. And you can see the maximum value we are having in this array as seven. Next, we have to find the average. So how to find the average? I will just write here NP dot average. And inside that I will just write here X. So you can see that this is the average. And as I told you that average will be the same as the mean, right? So let me find here the mean. So I can use here mean function also. So why we are getting here error? Because I have to put here the parameter as X. So now if you see here, the mean is same as the average, right? Now after calculating mean, let's calculate the median. So how to calculate the median? I will just write here NP dot median. And I'll just write here X. So in this way, you can calculate the median. So let's see. So here you can see that I am having here total nine elements and our median is here three. Now, after calculating median, now let's calculate here variance. So for variance, I will just write here NP dot variance and I will just write here X inside this function. So we have already calculated variance. Now, similarly, the same way you can also calculate here standard variation. You have to just write here the function STD and just write here X inside this as a parameter. And this is our standard deviation. Now, 
I have already told you about that. You can also calculate the minimum value as well as the maximum value across the column as well as rows. The same goes for the average. If you want to calculate the average across the column, then you can also calculate. Similarly, if you want to calculate the average across the row, then also you can do it. The same goes for mean, median and variance also. So let me just show you here. So if I want to calculate here uh, average along the row, so I'll just write here axis is equal to one. So here what will happen? It will give me the average across the row. So it will add one plus four plus two divided by three. Similarly, it will add three plus seven plus five divided by three and the same goes for the third row. So let me just execute this and you can see that I am getting my average across the rows. So this is the basic idea about the NumPy statistical functions. So now let's start with the standard deviation. So we will be knowing first about the mean. So what is mean here? Mean is nothing but sum of all the elements divided by the total number of elements. So let's take an example. So let me first import NumPy. So I'll just write here import NumPy as NP and I will create an array. So let me just write here the variable A. I will just write here NP dot array. And let me just write you. So this is nothing but a two dimensional array that I have created here. Let me just remove bracket here now. So now I have to calculate the mean here. So what is mean? So as we know that mean is sum of all the elements. So if you see that here, I'm total having six elements. So I will just add one plus two plus three plus three plus four plus five. Right. And total number of elements I was having six. So one plus two will be three. Three plus three will be six. Six plus three will be nine. Nine plus four will be 13 and 13 plus five. 13 plus 5 will be nothing but 18 and 18 by 6 is nothing 3 right so now in this way we can calculate the mean my mean is 3 so now using numpy I have to just write here np dot and mean and inside that I will pass a as a parameter so this is the mean function that we can use directly to calculate the mean here right in python programming so this is the basic idea about the mean. So next now let's see what is median. So median is nothing but the middle number or the center value in a set of data is called median. So let's take an example if I'm writing here 2, 3, 5, 7 and 8. If you count total I'm having here 5 values. So what will be the median? So if you want to find out the median. So first you have to arrange it in the ascending order or in the descending order. So I will be arranging it from least to greatest right. And well, it's already been sorted here. So let me just take another example. If I'm writing here two, five, three, and then eight and seven. Now I have to sort it. So I'll just write here two, three, five, seven, eight. Right now, what will be the median? So median will be the center value. So for the odd number, it's n plus one by two. So what is n my u? N is nothing but the total number of values. So the total number of values I'm having here five. So 5 plus 1 by 2. So 6 by 2 will be 3. So this will be my median third value, right? So now let's see the example for the even numbers. So let me write just here 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9. So if I'm having here even numbers, so total number of values here I'm having 6, which is even. So for that, what will be the median? So median will be the average of the 5 and 7. If you see n by 2, so n by 2 will be nothing. 6 by 2 is 3. And then n by 2 plus 1. That is 3 plus 1 will be 4. So this is the fourth value, right? So what will be my median? So my median will be the average of these two. That is 5 plus 7 by 2, right? And 5 plus 7 is nothing but 12. And 12 by 2 is 6, right? So in this way, you can just calculate the median. So let me just read it out. So data should be organized first in order of least to greatest or greatest to least to obtain the median. As I already told you that you can sort it in the ascending order or descending order. Next. So we have already seen the example of it, right? So now using NumPy, what we can do if you want to find the median. So I'll just write here NB dot median and 
I will pass the parameters. So let's suppose that if I am creating an array, right, using numpy. So I'll just pass the parameter here as a, right. We have already seen that how to create an array. So I will just import the module, import numpy as np, and I will just create a variable, and I will just write here np dot array, and I will assign it into the variable a, and I will just give here the values. So next, let's see how to calculate the variance. So variance is nothing but it is a measure of variability. So how to calculate the variance? By taking the average of square deviations from the mean, it can be calculated. So now let's see the formula. This sigma square is nothing but variance. This is a summation symbol, right? And capital X is nothing but it's the each value that is present in the array basically. So I will just create an array here. So in this condition, the value will be present in the array. So let me just import here, import numpy as np. And once again, I will just write here a is equal to np dot array. And I will just take here a simple example of one dimensional array. Here talking about mu, mu is nothing but the mean, right? And n is the number of values. So if you see there, number of values is here, three, right? So n will be three here. What is the mu? Mu is mean. So let me calculate the mean here. Mean will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 upon 3. So 6 by 3 is nothing but 3. So let's calculate variance. So if you see that is the summation of x minus mu whole square. So what is x? x is nothing but the each value that is present here. Right? So I'll just write here 1 minus what is my mean? 3 whole square plus because the summation sign is there. So once again, I will take the another value this time 2, 2 minus 3 whole square. And then the next value I'm having 3. So 3 minus 3 whole square upon n is the number of values that is 3. So now 1 minus 3 is nothing but minus 2. Minus 2 whole square is 4. 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Minus 1 whole square is 1. 3 minus 3 is 0. So my variance is 5 by 3. So what is 5 by 3? 5 by 3 will be nothing but it will be around 1.6, right? So this is the way to calculate the variance. Now if you want to calculate using NumPy, so I will just write here np dot variance and inside that I will just pass this variable as a parameter. So in this way we can easily calculate variance, right? Using NumPy. So moving next, now let's see how to calculate the standard deviation. So now if you are talking about the standard deviation, so if you see clearly, this is nothing but sigma square. Now what is sigma square? My sigma square is nothing but variance. So I can just write here. Standard deviation is nothing but it is the under root of the variance. So let's suppose my variance is 9. So sigma will be under root of 9, that is nothing but 3. So in this way, you can just easily calculate the standard deviation. So standard deviation is the square root of the variance and it is denoted by sigma, right? So this is the standard deviation symbol, right? So this is the basic idea about the standard deviation. So let's take a quick recap for numpy standard deviation. So we have started this tutorial by understanding what is Python. Then we have seen different packages that are present in Python. After that, we got to know the concept of what is NumPy. And then we have seen the functionalities along with that different statistical functions such as a min, a max, mean, median, and how to calculate the variance and standard deviation. So after understanding the statistical functions, we have seen the practical implementation of each statistical functions in Jupyter Notebook. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments.